Positivity, everyone. It's Takesha of Afro Canna Holistic, and you are joining me for another session of Black Women Who Blaze. And I have such a special guest, the brilliant Jamila Owens Todd. And she is a naturopathic doctor. And I mean, we get to, you know, I don't, I don't ever, I, I've never gotten to speak to a naturopathic doctor without having to make an appointment <laughs> and pay the consultation fee and things like that. So this is a gem. I truly appreciate you joining me on the platform and being able to dive in um, a little bit about cannabis and of course, natural healing modalities, herbs and all the other things. So would you please introduce yourself to the platform? Absolutely. And thank you for having me. And look, I'm going to invoice you later. So <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Um, so I am Jamila Owens Todd. I'm a naturopathic doctor. I've been working in the cannabis space for quite some time. And as I've got to talk to Takesha about just really herbal medicine and healing, that is, you know, I've been a practice. So sorry, let me really explain what I do, right? 15 years I've been in practice. Before that, I was a chemist and worked in the pharmaceutical industry and did more formulation. So I kind of blended that chemistry background with the naturopathic back background and then started making product and doing formulations for like supplement companies or, or uh, natural beverage companies that are currently out on the market. And that just was an easy transition into the cannabis space. And so I still take that concept of like, what else are we adding with our cannabis? How are we making this a holistic blend when I think of cannabis as the medicine as it is? It's an herbal medicine. So um, I want to you know, bring you in the conversation that we've been having <laughs> and talk about uh, what my role is now. So I do teach uh, quite a bit. I do teach at a university um, in cannabis operations. I teach cannabis pharmacology. I also work as a chief science officer for a cannabis manufacturer formulating products. So Wow. Here I am. Wow, I love it. And, you know, I just love it because you just are showing that there are different pathways into the industry, you know, using your, your current, you know, uh, I would say uh, career, you know, you can in, in your education, you can kind of pivot if you see that the cannabis industry is a space that you want to be in or are called to be in because as an herbalist, you know, as an herb crafter or a person who formulates and they begin to create products and, and different things with cannabis. You know, for me, once I once I saw that that could be done, I knew I had some interest in it. And I was already combining some cannabis in my formulations right. as well. And, you know, I've come up with all these different products and I've even done some subscription boxes for um, some people. Nice. And, you know, I love it, but it is, it, it takes a lot. It takes a lot, it takes a team. You know, it takes, uh, you know, a lot of uh, creativity. You know, I need the time and space to be able to do that. So to know someone that's actually doing and making money, you know, it's not, you know what I mean? You're being compensated. <laughs> yeah, that, that, you that know, helps. Time. Right, that, that helps as well. Yeah. That yeah. helps as well because, you know, for me, I just started mm -hmm. off really creating things for myself, my family and mm -hmm. friends. And then, of course, they were like, well, you need to put these things on the market. You know, you need mm -hmm. to get them out there. But I, I like my, you know, like you think that I would be of a better service creating maybe for those who want to put out mass products, you know, helping them formulate um, or creating some type of, you know, intellectual property where others can kind of DIY themselves. So that's the right. space I'm heading as far as product, you know, formulating and creating. But, um, you know, or consulting, you know, and, and that's something that you do. Right. That that role as a chief science officer is as a consultant. Now, I did work um, in a manufacturing facility for a cannabis company prior to this, prior to becoming a consultant. Um, and just, you, you know, it's it's like when I speak to people who are cultivators and they've been growing in their homes, it is a different ball game when you grow commercially in a, a licensed facility. Mm -hmm. I've been making products. I've worked in the pharmaceutical industry. I've worked in a 
structured setting, formulating products, but it's still different in the cannabis industry. And so if you have that opportunity just to learn those, those ins and outs, it definitely helps. I know we all, we talk a lot about owning our property and owning, that's a real conversation and I get it and I would never tell anyone to not do it. But if you are just starting out, sometimes you do have to give a little, you know, it's like, if you got, if you're a formulator, you can give away, so to speak, two of your formulations, meaning selling them at a lower cost or getting them out in the market, knowing that this will help your name for the next product or next consult your, your client. And so I did have to do a bit of that. There are products on the market that I worked on that are, I don't have a tie to at this point, but then I knew later on that would just help me get into other products where I can then talk about owning the IP and profit sharing. So, you know, it's a, it's, it's like, how much do you want to be in the industry and how much do you want to be in that field? Now I'm sure there are some anomalies out there where folks came out the gate and said, here's my product, you know, give me my, my equity in it. Um, but the real deal is sometimes you just have to, if you're getting your foot in the door, no one really knows you from what you've been doing from your family or your smaller community when you're trying to reach out a, to a bigger community and a bigger stage. So you do have to uh, bend a little bit. And I say, as a formulator, I could make, you know, 500 products. So I'm going to give you five. No, and I got another 495, you know, so it, I think if you consider it like that, you'll always be on the winning side. Yeah. Um, so you know, there, there's a give and take that, that entry into the industry that we sometimes cut ourselves out because we don't want to give more than what we need to. Right. Right. And, and that, and that's what I feel like it, it is a give and receive, you know? What I yeah. Mean? And so, yeah, you know, I don't, I don't have that issue where it's like, no, I don't want anybody, you know, to know, you know, <laughs> you know, <Yeah. laughs> I got the secret formula. I don't want anybody right. to know, you know? <laughs> type of thing but I, I can see I can understand the concept you know yeah. especially us coming into the space where right. you know a lot of times you know black women are asked to do things for free you know yeah you yeah, know without you know, compensation yeah that's, I know that's don't even get started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but you know I also think about the medicine that I'm working with which is plant medicine this is age old ancestral medicine. Yeah. Like we are reinvigorating things that have already been out there. No, none of us in, I don't care how many hybridized strains you've grown. Like the, that plant is ancient. Yeah. You know, our ancestors, ancestors were using this plant. So when I remember it in that way, that herbal medicine is a sharing, it's a remembering, it's a reconnection to our kind of ancestral history when it comes to medicine. Me reintroducing something what I think is in a new savvy way right. is really just me tapping into that healing that was already there before me that predated me. So then I look at it more as, is that kind of connection to universal energy and just you give and receive. Now uh, I don't mean to get off the tangent here, but giving and receive, if I create something, you want people to be able to receive it in the world we live in this very North American kind of current day world. We understand money as a, a, you know, an offering for what we've created. And so money can be considered, you know, something that keeps that energetic flow going. It keeps that um, cycle going because there's a respect with it. But if I know I have a person in front of me that I'm consulting with and it's a one-on-one -on -one and I gift them something, I know that them using it, their healing is part of that cycle of the universe. So that's on a smaller scale when it comes to companies you know, I think some of us go in, some of us mean Black women going in with very good intentions. And it's like, I'm going to give because that's just in our nature, yes. you know, to give. And there have been bad contracts and bad, you know, and it seems as if we've been wrong. I always say we've been educated. We've educated ourselves in business. We've learned to do it differently. We've learned to be assertive and hold our power so that the next time we're doing it with more intention and a contract, <laughs> you know? That's so I, I, and I'm just saying it cause I hear those stories of like, we give away everything and we, and some of that is just, that's how we show up. And if I step into that situation, knowing that I'm going to give away for about three months and then on, you know, month four, it's now time for me to think about how this returns back to me you know, financially, spiritually, ethically, morally, all of those ways that make me whole. 
Yeah. So I, that's just my little two cents about that. But I hear you. Not to negate anyone's story. Trust me, I got stories. I know you got stories. But I, I think in hindsight, it's like it was all a learning. It was all a learning to make us bigger and better in what we do. Yes, yes, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly, you know, that that is a part of the process. And like you said, all of the things that we are doing, you know, they, 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 the term is there's nothing new under the sun. And yeah, when, when I come up with formulations, oftentimes I, I feel like it's coming from that Akashic record of, mm. you know, that, yeah. that has been, you know, have been in existence, you know, and will continue to be. You know, right. so I'm just doing the part of being that, you know, can do it, that it kind of comes through yep. again. But, you know, so I, I try not to hold it all in. in yeah. it, you know, you want to pour it out as it's poured into you. But at the same time, of course, we don't want to be taken advantage of, you know, right. we shouldn't right. be. And so, Absolutely. yeah, yes, yes. So uh, what called you to this work specifically, like naturopathic? Uh, you know, being a naturopathic doctor after being a chemist, like what made you decide, hey, I'm going into herbal medicine? Yeah. Um, you know, when I really think about how I was raised, it was always to, if I didn't feel well, go to the cupboard. You know, if I had a, a scratchy throat, my mom would mix her little lemon and honey, mm -hmm. you know, and then have us do that. And, you know, we weren't like the family that would go run to the drugstore and buy a you know, over the counter meds. So a lot of that was just kind of in my upbringing, you know, and then beyond just the household, my grandmother lived on a, a farm, you know, her, my grandmother and grandfather, and, you know, she had 20 children. So you don't have 20 children back in that time. And you're like fruitful. These are, you know, this is the, everybody's working the land. They had acres of land and cows and hogs and grew everything. So I used to hate going down there in the summer because like we had to get up at 4 45 and pick peas and greens and now you get as an adult you respect it but if, same thing if you were sick it was like go out in the back pull up that root boil it drink it and so you know it's like some of that was just ingrained in me and you know we everyone has a story and then I had uh, started having health issues with my menstrual cycle early like in my late teen years early adolescence and um, I went into becoming a chemist and I was probably my second year studying in chemistry in undergrad. And I was going to these doctor's visits. And I remember the doctor, I was asking him all these questions. He's like, why don't you just go to school and study this and like really dismissive. And I thought at the time, I'm like, you know what, I'm a chemist and I'm really into plants. So I just started researching plants, came up with a little concoction that got rid of my menstrual cramps, you know, and then I still, cause I uh, pay for that education, right? <laughs> So I graduated as a chemist, but when I graduated, I knew I wanted to work in pharmaceuticals because I thought I was going to have a cure for cancer. I was a little naive, you know, and then so I went through that route and knew I had to kind of stack that experience. So it was always intentional to do something. My my goal was to do a PhD in organic chemistry, because to me, that would make sense to be in the research lab to come up with my cure for cancer. Right. And then it wasn't until I was working in research in a pharmaceutical company and just realizing this ain't it like this is not where cures are coming from the business was very palpable and present and and you know I'm not gonna get on here and knock like pharmaceutical industries I've seen them change people's lives so that wasn't the case it was what I needed to do was to take it a step further and find a valid form of um, schooling that could integrate the science with the herbs and that's where I found naturopathic medicine so it was just a perfect fit um, never thought I would be like one-on-one -on -one with patients. I was always kind of a lab rat, but, okay. um, so being in practice 15 years now, it's one-on-one. -on -one. And so it, it, it was, it was all in the cards, you know, and, um, there are days I listened and some days I didn't, <laughs> you know, but listening to that and just keep keeping me on my journey. Um, I know that's why I, I'm here. My physical being on this earth is to support people in their healing by con reconnecting them to what's natural and what's what's made for them. Yes, yes, I love it. I love it. I love that it was like the the your own experience with being able to create to use the plants and mm -hmm. your knowledge to 
heal something within yourself. Like that is like the the number one, I think, catalyst into be when you feel like, okay, I, I can do this, you know, I'm called mm-hmm. to and then you wanna share it and help others, right. you know, especially, you know, us knowing what we go through, um, starting with the menstrual, you know, in the pain. Right. And now, um, and that was one of my questions uh as well. Like what are some of the you know, herbs in combination with cannabis that you found most effective in like endometriosis. Um, mm. And, you know, because, you know, I, if a black woman, they deal with a high, you know, rate of fibroids, endometriosis, right. um, as hysterectomies and things like that. Yeah. Yep. And it's just like, okay, you know, the, the, no, the first thing that's really suggested is some type of hormonal treatment, mm-hmm. birth control, you, you know, or right. and then surgery to to remove your wound, right? You know, right. and for for me, um, you know, I, I have a few friends that you know now we've reached our forties, mm-hmm. and they're dealing with these you know these symptoms and these issues, and you know, for me, it's getting to the root cause, you know, right. it's getting right. to the root cause. Let's go ahead. Let's let's stop doing what we are. What you know is no longer serving us okay Mm -hmm. (laughs) and expecting different results and then let's get to the root cause of it and then at that point um that's how I kind of work with myself you know Mm -hmm. that's how I kind of work it out as far as what you know what's not working what is working what is effective you know historically as far Mm -hmm. as the plants and the foods and then you know incorporating that in at the same time eliminating you know things that um, a causing inflammation and, you know, heavy. Absolutely. Like so, uh, but specifically for herbs and things like that, what, what are the, some of the combinations that, um, can be combined with cannabis? Cause you know, there's, they get cannabis recommended. Most of them are just smoking it. And it's like, all right, girl, well, yeah, that did it, but I didn't, you know, that didn't stop it from coming the next month, you know? So, right. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and that's a, um, I won't get too long-winded on this, but with menstrual cycle, we just heard an article about perm products, uh, relaxers causing uterine cancer. And, you know, this should not be a, a shock. We've been hearing kind of remnants of that. You got the Johnson & Johnson and ovarian cancer. Like we're hearing these kind of um, self-care supposedly or beauty products that have been causing us more damage and are historically used in our community and so um it's a multi multi multi-fold you know so like you said getting to the root cause so i have that conversation first what are you cleaning your body with what are you cleaning your house with what are you cleaning your dishes with because i don't want to say here's this herb combination and you go back to relaxing your hair or you bleach, you know, putting bleach in your dishwater because you know how we do. <laughs> you walk it, you know, come coffee folks out. <laughs> you walk in the house, that dishwater got blamed. Like you live here, you just you. Why are you putting bleach in your dishwater? So all of those things are really what is going to keep imbalances with our hormones. So if we don't eradicate, move that out of the system, and then the herbs are helpful, but they're not really going to heal you in the way that you want. Right. Um, when I found out about um, the um, menstrual issues and they were trying to figure it out at the time, it was fibroids, which I then shrunk. Part of that was uh, diet. I did 16 months of um, no sugar and following a raw diet. And and I'm not saying everyone has to be a raw vegan. It was my determination was because the doctor's like, you might have to have a hysterectomy. And I was you know, 22. And I'm like, I don't know if I want children, but I don't need you telling me I can't have them. So I was a little bit of spite and anger that motivated me to not eat sugar for 16 months, but it was also being very strict in the, in the meal meal plan. So that's the, the first part is the chemical exposure. Second part is the diet and getting the hormones out because the hormones are coming in through animal products. And then it's like the herbs will come in. So even though they're kind of standards for women, I have found women all have different kind of approaches to their herbal kind of um, protocol. I can tell you there aren't, I could probably have five women, they all have five different herbal protocols. And sometimes pain is the predominant, sometimes bleeding. So then we might add in some yarrow if there's some bleeding or uh, I do use homeopathics as well. 
So um, I address the urgent cause and then we kind of move into the root because the root is lifelong. The root is, this is what I'm doing for, I'm always mindful of my animal protein. I'm like, those are things you're going to have to continue to do because this affliction, you know, is causing much disruption in your life. So when it comes to herbs, when I'm thinking about endometriosis and pain, I do a combination. So if they're using cannabis, I like topical. So a CBD um, balm that they can mix with castor oil and do castor oil packs over the abdomen, that's for fibroids, cramping, endometrial pain. So they're getting the topical application. And when they apply it, they have covered with the fabric and place heat over it like a hot water bottle. So that deep absorption of the CBD. Um, and you can use a THC bomb, but I CBD typically is a little bit cheaper depending on what market you're in right. uh, than buying a THC bomb. And then half and half with castor oil because that drives into the skin a depth of like four inches. So it really has a deeper effect on the uterine tissue. And then what they take, um, if they're smoking to help with the, the immediate, like intense pain, I always tell them to take, you know, if you got your flower, I do suggest doing um, flowers. We talked about terpenes with myrcene, caryophylline, um, terpenes. So sometimes those are called indicas, but that's not, you can't always rely on that because I've seen indicas with not those terpenes so but those heavier kind of um sedating strains and then grind up a fourth of that so if you got a gram of flour you take three fourths of that and have flour the four, last fourth you're going to mix in um lavender because lavender is a calming agent it's um reduces anxiety but anything that's calming and re reduces anxiety also has that physical effect on the muscle tissue and can encourage calm um, physically with the body. And that's if they want to smoke. If they don't want to smoke and they can do edibles, I always suggest a tincture or honey. Um, I always like to infuse honey. That's like my main way that I consume is I'll take my flour, you can throw, um, throw it in a crock pot with your honey. And then I add the lavender and often chamomile in there. So if I had let's say seven grams of flour, I'm going to add two grams lavender, two grams of um, chamomile and have all of that in the crock pot, go for 24 hours, strain that. And then that honey I'm mixing into my my uh, Vitex tea. Vitex is also called, what's the common name? Vitex agnus castus is called, um, it's a root. Oh, I'll, it'll come back to me. But the Latin name is Vitex ag okay. agnus castus. Um, and so you're using that, or raspberry, raspberry leaf. We know that that's a good uterine tonic. And so now you have this tea that you're drinking that's infused. Not only are you getting the reduction in the pain, it's also, you got the anti-inflammatory, you got the chamomile lavender, the sedating. And so you just get an added benefit with the other botanicals. So that's a recipe that I like to tell women, like you can just keep, and then you can make so much of the honey Right. That you only need a teaspoon amount, depending on your tolerance. Some people do a fourth of a teaspoon; they <laughs> worried about it, right. you know. But if you do it at night, you do a teaspoon. If you're having it throughout the day, I say go down to a fourth teaspoon, so that you don't feel like you're too out of sorts. And then, or you can make instead of an eight ounce glass of the tea, you can make a sixteen ounce and add your teaspoon, so it's more diluted. Right. But you're getting those other botanicals mixed in, um, and that can be used for a lot of just reproductive imbalance overall. Yes, yes, yes. And so, you know, two things, because you mentioned the honey, and that's like the going thing, you know, um, at the uh, at CCI, the Cannabis Coaching Institute, but you are a chemist. So, mm -hmm. this, you know, some of us, we infuse our honey with straight raw flour, well, decarbed, mm -hmm. you know, it, it mm -hmm. depends on what cannabinoid we want in it, right? Right. And then you have those that are saying that it needs to be there needs to be a fat. And so you have to use the coconut oil and then blend that with your honey in order to get the full benefits of the plant. Um, I've all, you know, before, you know, that was mentioned, I've, you know, infused my honey to no issue. <laughs> I felt the effects, no problem. Now I've done it with uh, the coconut oil as yep. well. And I'm not, could I do not like the taste. I yeah. do not I, I prefer not to keep my two infusions separate. So yep. what do you think? Yeah, when I first started making honey, I did it in the coconut oil. 
Um, now I do have access to distillate. Sometimes I'll buy the distillate and just mix it in. That's the quick and easy way. But um, so I started making mine with the coconut oil and then I would whip it because that oil separates. And then I would use a handheld blender and have a whipped honey. And just um, even that can start to separate out after a couple of days. And then you're right, the taste I just dislike. Now, so then I said, well, let me try it with just the honey. And still, like you said, feel the same effects. What we're looking at with the fats is that fats cross the blood brain barrier. And so it has that component of digestion and absorbability that we can get. But there are really three main things that we, we absorb in our diets, uh, carbohydrate, fats, and proteins. Honey is a carbohydrate. So it's still a molecule that the body absorbs actually very quickly. And the viscous or the thickness of it is what helps it um, in its absorption rate. So it still has a benefit, not to mention the bioflavonoids that you get in honey, like quercetin, and that also helps to channel and move things into the bloodstream more efficiently. So if it were just using, you know, flour without doing, I can see having another medium that was non-fat, but you actually get just as much of a benefit with using raw honey by itself or honey alone without having to add the fat in. And I always tell people, try it, make them both ways and see what you notice. And everyone notices the same yeah. with the honey, without uh, fats and with fat. So I get that concept. It's it's kind of like turmeric. You know, we always hear about turmeric. You have to have with pepper. You have to have with pepper. And I tell people, try turmeric without pepper and right. see if it still reduces your headache or joint pain. And it does. So enhanced absorption is always something we think about in the nutritional world. And food absorption is the primary source, like um, food combining. Ideally, you're only supposed to eat a protein with a green. Yeah. So sandwiches, you're not supposed to eat because you're not supposed to have bread and turkey, but people still do it and they feel full. Or they feel... So it's like there are these rules that exist on maximizing absorption, which is really key, but the body is intelligent enough to take what it needs from however you're preparing it and use it in the way that it's supposed to. So I think we want to remember the body's intelligence sometimes can um, rival our mental intelligence right. and then trust the process. One thing I'll, I'll say this with Chinese medicine, you know, how we talk about food combining, never eat fruits combined with other foods, right? So when I see a salad that has strawberries on it, it drives me mad, but, <laughs> or you're supposed to eat fruits alone because the enzymes in your body can't process them. You're not supposed to eat meat with anything other than a green. Like there are all of these food rules for maximum absorption. In Chinese medicine, what they say is you throw everything in a pot and those foods are going to reconcile what is needed and what your body needs. And that relationship becomes synergistic and you trust that you're getting what you need with each bite. So there is a little bit more of a holistic view when it comes to maximizing absorption and food combining. Um, in the traditional Chinese medicine. Uh, so I've liked that concept. Um, and I apply that to any herbal formulation. Now, you are thinking when you're combining herbs, if it's a high alkaloid content, or if it's certain things that can cancel out, like you're always thinking about that. But you change the ratios and the percentages in order for people to get a better absorption. So that I get that and the science is there. But people will get what they need. And I trust that. Right. Right, right. Great, great. And yes, I, I love what you said about the food combining, because that's one of the first things that, you know, when I start consulting with a, with a client that we get into, mm -hmm. you know, what they're pairing with what, and, mm -hmm. and that's nice. part of the elimination and kind of the change in, you know, mindset when you do consume, you know, when you're drinking or, you know, right. eating, you know, as uh, in comparison to when you start consuming a meal, and how long it takes for things to, you know, break down in your body and process, especially with the gut, you know, and just getting yeah. into that health and, and, you know, your brains and things like that. Okay. <laughs> and things like that. It, um, you know, that's important when, when it comes to wanting to kind of, you know, especially uh, repair and restore it. Your right. Gut, you know, so that was mm -hmm. like the biggest thing that helped me with, um, you know, the H. pylori. Uh, mm. that I dealt with in, in getting rid of it without antibiotics it was mm. okay you're gonna you're, you're no longer gonna be eating this with that um yeah. as well like you said fruits by themselves in the morning yeah yeah detox the body 
And, you know, if I was going to have meat, it had to be when I started to consume it again, it had to be with greens only Absolutely. Or with greens. It was never all together. So, yeah. you know, yeah. When I started looking at that and like, oh my gosh, <laughs> hamburgers and, and cheeseburgers, we're all eating. And it's just like, now one of the that is yeah. you know, <laughs> right. It, it makes pizza. Sense. You know, there's so <laughs> many things that like the worst for your gut, but no one questions that, you know, they're like eating pizza. Like we shouldn't be adding oil. I'm like, <laughs> right, 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 right. But but if I want to put just raw, well, just put flour in my honey, it's like, like no, that's, 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 yeah. That's, 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 so exactly, so, you know. Thank you for for sharing that insight with us, and um, also suppositories. I wanted to ask mm -hmm. what your thoughts were with suppositories for you know for anyone dealing with those type of issues when it comes to menstrual cycle. Um, or bladder issues or anything like that. Oh, for sure. And your cannabinoids and, and terpenes that way. Mm -hmm. Is it safe? What do you think about that? Yeah, I'm a, a big fan of um, using suppositories. I think it is one of the best things you can do for reproductive health. Um, and, you know, you can, so suppositories can use be used vaginally or anally. Um, so if people have proctitis or anal itching or inflammation or even colon issues, they can do an anti-inflammatory blend. Um, and then vaginally, I mean, it not just with, you know, like you say, bladder health and uh, reproductive pain, discomfort, vaginal dryness, all very helpful. Now, I don't suggest adding terpenes to the um, suppositories. I like to keep my suppositories very plain. Mm -hmm. So we're talking like, I you can make them at home. You can get vitamin E oil and coconut oil as your base and just refrigerate them. Now, it's not, for some people, it's fun, but in a frozen <laughs> coconut oil suppository, <laughs> vaginally, it's an experience, I'll tell you that. <laughs> but if like, if you wanna make it without the equipment to make it, you know, if I'm in the compounding lab, I'm using beeswax and cocoa butter and, and so they can stay shelf stable, you know? But when I have people make them, I just say, buy the little kit and just get coconut oil and vitamin E because you're going to get that nourishing healing of the surrounding tissue and then you're infusing it with your herbs. Um, so whether you're doing something that's like antibacterial and you're adding oregano oil and, you know, a um, concoction of like, you know, golden seal, you can totally do that. And then with cannabis. Um, so I like to do the, I do a equal blend of the THC oil and the CBD oil. Yeah. Typically when I'm using it for pain, um, also it can heighten sexual arousal. So there, there's that concern. And so it's like, I find that that THC equal part CBD blend is usually the most, um, effective for a kind of more well-rounded approach to kind of, uh, reproductive specifically with female reproductive concerns. Yes. I love that you, you shared that and, and also incorporating other, uh, herbs and, and in right. the repository because, you know, for us in the cannabis world, especially women, you know, hearing about suppositories, it's like, what? Well, you know, you get the, but I do also like the combination of the THC and CBD one to one. Yeah. But also, I do like to incorporate the other herbs and, and, and essential oils, you know. So, yeah. you know, yeah. um, but I agree that you, you do have to be mindful the type. <laughs> that yeah. You start to add. And then, as far as like you said, the terpenes. When I when I said that, just the from the from the actual, if you're using the oil, whatever's in in that oil. Um, I've mm -hmm. even made some whole flour. Um, I I've used uh the organic cocoa butter, mm -hmm. and a little you know added a little coconut oil to to give it a little more slip. But right, you know, right, just to see what that was like as opposed to the concentrated oil. Um, yeah, probably. so that's yeah. a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good idea. And and you said something. I, I always suggest using everything organic. So get the coconut oil organic, get the cocoa butter organic whenever you're using anything uh, as a suppository. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. And so um, also the question, you know, we've heard um, a lot with people being ill with uh, obviously COVID or any respiratory issues and things like that. And we've seen now there's been science that you know, the acids in uh, cannabis have been mm -hmm. helpful, you know, yeah. in the, so are you, have you been, you know, like asked to kind of now create formulations, 
with just the acids and in products and things like that um do you see anything like that come to market like cbga cb yeah CBGA? um so the thing about the thca and cbda i mean is in a for in a manufacturing lab you're hoping they stay at the acid and don't convert into thc right um any slight elevation in temperature i mean thc you let your flower sit for a long period of time, there's going to be some conversion to THC. Yeah. So THCA isn't just converting with heat; it's also converting with age. Mm -hmm. So, and so that's the I'm saying that to say that yes, there's been some definitely some um, interest. Um, there are a couple of THCA products out there, but it's kind of like you have to know that that conversion is happening, and there's going to be some THC. Um, I think THCA is really great for kind of neurological support. That's primarily how I'll use it. And I do see the studies about COVID, which were more for CBDA. Mm -hmm. um, I, so my issue sometimes is more around how it's extracted, um, who's extracting and what the process is. Because you can don't you could totally get those acids off and if you're doing, you know, low temperature nug press, you got the nug master. You know, you can do very low temperature. I mean, the yield isn't going to be as great, but you can get some THCA. The question is, what do I do with it afterwards? So I like to use it in combination. Um, so the cost factor and the method of extraction are always my concern when thinking about it. And if I don't get good quality starting material, then I'm going to say, just use CBD. Right. Because if I can't trust the source, then I'm not going to suggest it. So in theory, yes, THCA and CBDA, I think are good, good um, items to have for the anti-inflammatory benefits, their neurological supportive components. Um, if that's the issue about this industry, if there were one bone to pick, you know, you got these, you know, Delta eights that are coming out and, and, you know, I understand people wanting to do it. And some people have good benefit, show me a process that isn't toxic. Mm -hmm. It isn't using, you know, extreme, extremely harsh chemicals. I mean, we're already kind of skirting the line with traditional um, extraction methods like hydrocarbon. And everyone talks about the remediation phase and you get rid of all of the residual solvents. You get rid of a majority of them, true. But it still is, it's been washed with the solvent. You know, CO2 is a bit of a healthier solvent than um, the butane or hydrocarbon and then ethanol you know, you ever had a shot of tequila, you know, everyone's had a little bit of ethanol. So it's just a more common solvent. So these processes of extraction, um, I, I will admit being in manufacturing, sometimes that's where I get a little, because I want to deliver a good quality high-end product and we can't negate that the extraction process is, um, can be concerning, especially when we get into some of these other methods. So yeah, it's yeah. A subject. <laughs> yes, it is because you know that's the, you know, I do get some questions about the the deltas and the TCO and mm -hmm. you know, now is it HHC or something like that? HHC, yeah. Yeah, there's some you know other uh cannabinoids that are showing up, and is it mm -hmm. safe? You know, I'm getting it from my local smoke shop, and it's just right. like you know, <laughs> you know, I'm like okay, you know, but. Um, now THCV is making this, you know, uh, big, yeah. you know, show and, you know, the forbidden V and I've consumed it. I thought it was rather tasty. I'm not going to, okay. okay. like, you know, um, the effects weren't as, um, I, I, I did like the effect on it, but my question is, is this, you know, is this, a, is this a real you know, plant, like, is this a real cannabinoid that, or is this derived again? Like, is this something synthetic that's, you know, that they're putting out? I mean, it's being grown from a seed. So what's happening here? Right. Like, they're real cannabinoids. So they are real components of the cannabis plant. How do we get them out? How do we utilize them is where the question comes in. Um, and then, I mean, I have yet to see someone who said they have positive benefits from they, you know, I'm usually getting, and, and I'm not saying that those people don't exist. Right. When patients are coming to me, it's like, oh man, I tried this THCO and now I got a headache. And so I, that's what the response that I'm getting. Um, yes. Yeah, so they're real cannabinoids, but their existence um, in the kind of platform of medicine is questionable. 
because to get them, you have to do some radical extractions and using washing them and, and using certain amounts of chemicals. And so, um, I mean, we just talked about chemicals in hair care products, mm -hmm. you know, it, it, so, so just to give an outline, you know, I always talk, give the example of white willow bark. White willow bark was discovered to have salicylic acid. You can go grow white willow bark. You can use it to reduce your headaches. You take it to a lab, they take that white willow bark and they wash it and attach a chemical to it. And they, and now you have this aspirin that's sold in stores. Mm -hmm. So yes, it's derived from a plant, but the end product that's sold in CVS or your local drugstore or Walgreens isn't a plant, isn't a plant product. Okay. It's plant derived. Heroin is plant derived. Right. Opium. I mean, so we can go down the line of what's plant derived. Right. How do you get to the point of it being a usable plant molecule is where the question comes in line. Right. And so, um, it, it, and I think because it's all things cannabis, everyone wants to assume that it's healthy, which is not the case. You know, you got people avoiding soy. Soy is a plant, great protein source, but the genetically modified seed that's overwhelming our markets. And everyone's like, don't give me soy, but they'll do THCO because right. the thought it comes from a plant. So there are a lot of things that are seed generated, but their extraction, their cleansing, their remediation, all the processes they get them to you are not necessarily organic and natural, nor are they safe. And that's the unfortunate thing we're dealing with with the cannabis. It's like all oh, cannabis is still new, still a new industry. We're all figuring it out. And it's like, well, it comes from cannabis. I'm like, yeah. I always say, well, you know, heroin comes from poppy seed. Yes, yes, yes. This is true. And and that's, I think, the when it comes to, you know, prohibition and federal legalization, that's the question for me is, right, are we going to even be able to get there with all the things that are being done prior to us being able to have access, fully have access to the plant the way we can? You know, everyone, in, like you said, doing those type of extractions that are, uh, you know, really bringing more harmful chemicals, you know, to your body and stuff like that. And then you have, I mean, it, it you know, it's, it's, it's unfortunate, but I know it's a new industry and everybody's excited yeah. and we want to see what it can do. And, but for me, the, the main goal is to have access to this plant so people can find balance in their bodies, like for it to yeah. do what it was put on this planet to do, you know? Yeah. Um, and from, uh, you know, the extractions that I've started creating, I, you know, old school, same way I do <laughs> my lavender when I want a lavender oil, right, or, right. you know, hip or um, my dandelion root, you know? So it's, it's all being, you know, with, um, with Everclear, that's that's what I have yep. access to. That's what yep. I and it sits for you know six to eight weeks. Yeah. Um. And then you know, and then that's how I make my tincture. And then you know, I do have an extract craft where I'm able to kind of mm -hmm. you know, create a concentrated form, um, if I would like. But you know, that's as simple in and as far as I've I've gone. You know. Yeah. And um, yeah. I like you said, I'm seeing this and hearing about the new cannabinoids out mm -hmm. and how they're being derived really from CBD and then, you know, yeah. sprayed onto or however it is. Oh, that's a whole nother. <laughs> right. <Praying. So. laughs> that's huge. And I'm going to tell you, that's huge right? in this market. You know, you, you think you're getting a pre-roll. It's CBD flower with sprayed on distillate. And that's more common than you think. And people are like, oh, I got the sticky. And I'm like, that sticky is sprayed <laughs> on CBD. <laughs> sprayed on THC oil, but you know, a lot of complaint. Right. Yeah. So it's, there are going to be, um, unfortunately unethical things in every market. And, you know, people don't want to claim them as unethical because they feel like, well, it's still getting the plants to people. It really is going to have to be up to the consumer. This is why I like to do education. That's why you do consulting because you have to, I mean, there's so much misinformation. Like there are people like you who are studying and working and been working with plants that needs to get out there and say, this is the best way to use it. I'm not suggesting that you've, you've been smoking for 20 years. You don't know anything. That's not what I'm suggesting. Right. But we've also been eating for 20 years or more, and we may not know the best combinations for us. So it's part of healing is knowing when to seek a healer. I think we're all healers. But sometimes if I got to worry about rent, and my car and my baby dad, I got all this going on. The healer in me isn't being activated. 
So I need to find out. So part of being a healer is knowing when to seek out another healer because then you connect. And all we're going to do is remind you of the healer that you are and how to tap back into it. And so sometimes, I mean, I go to a bunch of practitioners because I feel like that person, you know, um, there's a sign in my chiropractor's office that the doctor that has himself as a patient has a fool for a patient. Mm. So even though we're all healers, there is a time when we need to seek out, even if it's once or twice or three times and say, hey, give me a little background on what you think I should be doing. You could walk away and say, I don't want to hear anything this woman has to say to me, but you at least have an insight Mm. to someone else who's there to support and help you in your healing. And so I say that to say there's so much misinformation out there. Unfortunately, there's so much misinformation about cannabis, Mm -hmm. uh, which I am shocked every day. I see little news articles or the questions that I get from people who work in the industry. And I don't want to say I don't fault them. It's just there's you're being inundated by misinformation and competing information. So sometimes it's like, let me seek out support from someone who does this regularly. You can read. You can, you know, listen to podcasts. I think that's all very important too. Um, But having that one-on-one who's going to look at you and say, you need this is really helpful. Um, And also usually encourages success and healing and finding ways. You know, I tried every edible that there was and I've just realized I don't like edibles. Why am I trying edibles? Because I didn't want to smoke. So I'm like, why am I trying all these edibles? I dislike them all. I like the taste of the chocolates, I won't lie. But the effects of them just don't, sit well with me and then i started doing the honey honey and tinctures are the two things that work for me now someone else is gonna say i can't do any of that i can only do gummies but it's like taking the time to explore what works for you and being okay with saying maybe i won't do this method today i'll try another method or being open to other ways being open to like any thc i consume now has cbd with it or some other herb yeah because it's just i want all of the benefits i'm gonna medicate i'm gonna medicate right. you know <laughs> right right i agree and that and um that's the thing now for me it's kind of like where can i pair cannabis you know mm-hmm. and, and it's not and, and a lot of people think that so when we think we talk about cannabis we're just speaking about thc and the euphoric effects like oh she just nope. really hot. she's just you always right. get, and it's like, you know, cause I have a cup and it's like, yes, there's cannabis in this cup, but it's, <laughs> it may not be, you know, th- what you're thinking, you know, mm-hmm. like you said, it can be CBD or CBG, um, right. you know, a tincture or, and it's always combined with something, some CMOS or, you know, mm-hmm. it's, you know, like I said, my favorite for, I replace like coffee with dandelion root. Cause I just love oh. it the roasted a chicory yeah. in there <laughs> right it, it, <laughs> exactly <laughs> so you know how do we how do we call more people to herbs you know in general because everyone like singles out cannabis right. I guess because it can cover so many bases um, right there are other herbs you know out here and also medicinal mushrooms you know i see the the psilocybin you know yes happening but you know we don't want to overshadow the other mushrooms that do so much work in our bodies yeah. especially for women um you know yeah that... cordyceps turkey tail reishi my taiki agaricus i use mushrooms every day yeah uh, not the psilocybin i can't i'm, right. I'm not great you know can't be walking around tripping all day, but I do take um, usually some blend of mushrooms and I've just noticed a, a huge significant improvement in my, my immune function, my health, my energy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just usually mix them in with, with like a, a little morning drink, but um, I'm not a big surprise. I'm not a big supplement person, <laughs> but you know, the things, if I can get them in. So when you're saying, how do we get people to recognize herbs through food? Everyone eats. So it's like, here's the thing. If you're making your eggs in the morning and I always say, make your eggs green, chop up some fresh basil or oregano, like start with the culinary herbs and see, does that make a difference? Do you notice the digestion is improved? You know, I think through the food and palate, like sprinkle some turmeric and ginger. If you got some, you know, you're doing some fish, find a recipe that says has turmeric and ginger and see like, does that feel better? The anti-inflammatory benefits. So I try to infuse them through the herbs and then um, an evening tea, you know, you talked about Everclear. That's what the industrial companies, they go out and buy vodka, brandy, the big known herb come. That's what they're using to make their herbal tinctures. Well, your very first extraction 
is water. That's your very first solvent that most people use. So alcohol is a solvent. You got all these solvents, but water is a solvent. Yeah. So if you're wondering about an herb, steep it and see how it tastes and how it feels. And, oh, it's too strong. Maybe I'll dilute it next time. Dandelion. I, I drink dandelion and nettle like nobody's business. And I'll usually add it to my regular tea blend, which right now is a chai oolong kind of, you know. Um, but yeah, I think starting out with just saying, add it in your meals and your cooked food. You know, if you're eating oatmeal, you better put some cinnamon in, on that oatmeal okay. and nutmeg. And then, so it's not just cinnamon. It's like explaining cinnamon is regulating your blood sugar. It's increasing circulation. Like it has all of these other benefits. So then that intention is there when I'm preparing a meal. Mm -hmm. You know, I think even if it's like, um, well, you know, I hate to even say this, but go to a fast food and get your fries, right? For your McDonald's French fries. Take those fries home and get some Himalayan pink salt instead. Tell them, don't put my salt on my fries, right. you know, and like start swapping out for some of those more known um, herbs and minerals and seeing how they make you feel. I think that's a good start. And then I ease into teas. Teas are just so accessible. You can go get a tea. They're affordable. They're accessible. And if you have the bulk herb, you can strain it and then just get a feel for it. I always taste it without a sweetener first because you want to know what this herb tastes like. Um, and then you might actually enjoy the flavor of it better. And then it's like, well, I like dandelion. I do want some lavender, but maybe I'll add in this green tea. Okay, now you have a tea blend that you just created. And now drink that, and that's a way of infusing the medicine. So I start from the what's easy, what you're eating and what you're drinking. And then it's like, you know, I give uh, my, what I call my inflammatory tea mix. You got a headache or pain or cramps, you can get your turmeric powder. Your, you know this, the turmeric powder out of your cupboard, ginger powder. Take a, a very level teaspoon of ginger powder, level teaspoon of turmeric powder, and then a teaspoon of honey and pour some boiling water over there, about 12 to 16 ounces. Now those powders are kind of murky, so you got to stir for a while. And drink that, if you have a headache, back pain, stomach pain, knee pain, arthritis, drink that, two of that cups of that a day and see if that pain starts to go away. So now it's like, these are my seasonings, which are herbs, my yeah. spices, which are herbs. Yeah. I'm now finding a way to put them in. And if the pain only goes away slightly, now you might need a tincture of turmeric and ginger right with a little bit of boswellia and devil's claw you know right. <laughs> you can start right. so it's like now it becomes a part of your lifestyle because that's how we consume these, these herbs weren't like put them on the shelf and take them when they, they were in our foods in our drinks right. i mean look at the the beverages a lot of the spirits were you know cordials mm -hmm. they were they were cordials are just herbs steeped with you know, in the vodka or Everclear or brandy, exactly a little sweetener. Exactly. And this was sipped for immune health. Exactly. You know, um, and it was a, that that was there was a lot to unpack in there. Right. <laughs> really, you know, it's you gotta rein me in sometimes. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Because that's normally how I get. So it's okay to have someone else do it. Um, but it, this is true. This is true because. You know, right in our foods, you know, oftentimes you're pulling those herbs out to go ahead and season up that chicken breast, you know, for, for flavor, you know, so herbs are right. not just for flavor. Okay. Right. They are for healing. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. and and that's the point, you know, that, that, like you said, that is a point and in the right combination, they can do, you know, so many good things in your body. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like you said, with the turmeric and ginger, that's actually what I'm consuming now. Oh, uh, yeah. um, you know, it, in, at night you can warm up some coconut milk and mm -hmm. now that's, a, you know, now it's a yep. little golden milk, you know, right, honey, right. And then you can add your little infused honey that you spoke about mm -hmm. earlier and really set, <laughs> set yourself <laughs> up, you right. know, for a great anti-inflammatory sip. You know, mm. so that was my, um, that was a part of my subscription box too. That was, mm. that was started, Sacred Sips and Soaks. Are um, you still doing those? Yeah, one, I do it once a year now. Okay, um, okay. So in for spring, um, okay. I do it. But last year, uh, this year I just did it once a year. Last year it was once a season. And okay. So it was all the herbs that were good for the season mm. and to prepare you. So you got it ahead of time. And it I was uh, obviously some infusions and some treats. 
some formulations and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, you know, my, my husband was saying, you know, that's that's the way to go. And it's just, I right. know but it's production, you know. Um, yeah, I know, productionism. Every, yeah, yes. everything that was in there that wasn't added in was created by me. And it was, hmm. you know, that takes some time, but- where yeah. can I order this for next for next year or this year? Right, right. Well, yeah, you know, you can. I want one. Yes, yes. I would love to send you one so you can, you know, like you said, you know, imbibe and kind of absorb yeah. and, and 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 you know, be inspired, you know, and 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 just give, you know, I I I love inspiration as well. Um, hmm. so you know, I got my little um at home apothecary, so I'm always okay. combining and. And, and seeing what's, you know, what feels right together. And it's the right. intention, you know, it was right. inspired by my friends that, you know, I sent them a, a box of things, you know, that I accumulated for our little group. And they just, you know, it was like, this is a, subscri a subscription box. Like we need mm. to out, you know, I just feel all the love. I'm feeling all the, you know, the vibe yeah. of the created. So, um, so the teas are definitely dear to my heart. Okay. Uh, as the first way, maybe introduction into how herbs can be combined or even just one herb, you mm -hmm. know, can do so many good things in your body and then maybe open up the conversation, you know, mm -hmm. and there's nothing better than kind of having a conversation while you sip some tea as well. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, um, yeah, but yeah, I, I agree. We, we use the foods and normally eat the, the herbs and we put it up in a cabinet and they sit up there dried <laughs> and we right. bring them out, you know, mm -hmm. um, but we are incorporating them every day and we don't even realize it. So that is a great way to kind of call people to recognize the use of herbs, mm -hmm. you know, every day and what they eat and drink, you right. know, in the history of it. Um, I think cannabis being separated from herbalism is really a mistake it, it it's 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 a part of it and it's not just the hemp plant you know because you'll see that in there <laughs> but you won't see the you know you won't see cannabis uh itself right. um, and all the things that it can do for the body but i agree that that's where it that's its home yeah you know? it's, right. a, it's a plant it's an herb it's a food you know it's nutrition mm -hmm. definitely and and the fiber so it should be right. treated as such, um, you know, it's beyond just that euphoric high, you yep. know, so that's, you know, but I want to talk about um, your business, you know, and where people can find, oh. uh, find, find you, how they can access, you know, all your great offerings, you know, okay. anybody that needs some healing. I would have, I wanted to dive more into specific uh, conditions, but I think that people can reach out to you if they have a specific condition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I do um, work with pretty much any condition um, as a naturopath. You see all, it's again, we don't, we don't treat conditions, we treat people. So your training is to treat the person. Um, what I have focused a lot on has been met metabolic diseases. So, car you know, cardiovascular health, diabetes, um, things like that, cancer support, um, I do a lot with autoimmune conditions, so MS, um, lupus, ALS, um, so really supporting patients anywhere in that stage with autoimmunity. Um, I spend a significant amount of my time with neurological, and when I say neurological, that includes mood, mental, emotional, yeah. and just finding sustainable options to regulate mood and support the mood. I work a lot with our youth with ADD, ADHD, and mental focus. Um, conditions like dementia, Parkinson's, Alzheimer's. So, so that's, those are the main areas where I see patients and where I spend um, a lot of time and I see some success. So I'm saying that because those are conditions that are often challenging in a traditional medical setting, but they can find really huge benefit in a naturopathic setting. And so um, I'm, I do have a website www.menthealth.org. So mint is my company, M as in Mary, I-N-T, like peppermint, and the word health, but it's .org, .org. Um, I, I sparingly use social media. So I have a Twitter account, which, uh, sorry, skip this Twitter account. I got an Instagram account, <laughs> which is mint, S-T-L. And then the other is easy. It's Jamila Likes Plants. <laughs> okay. Okay. So at Jamila Likes Plants, you can reach me there. 
Um, but I, I do have a website, midhealth.org. And it so my business is a consulting. So I'm a practitioner and I see patients, but I also work with businesses. So new and up and coming businesses who are trying to start their manufacturing or um, wanting to get into the cannabis space or just looking into, you know, hey, I have this formulation. How do I, you know, bring it to fruition? So you'll see kind of the business consulting that I'll do and then the, the practitioner uh, patient consulting that you can kind of choose one of the options uh, on there. So um, yeah, I'm definitely available to support anyone. Um, I know you have consulting services as well that I'm really excited about. And um, you see primarily clients working with their health, right, too? Yes, yes. Clients, um, you know, one-to-one, um, I'll, I'll, you know, I've t- taken that on. And it, it takes a lot, you know, for mm-hmm. me, you know, working with someone one-to-one and just all the things that kind of, I, I kind of dive into with them. It, mm-hmm. You know, it's a 12-week program that okay. I've been through. So, you know, that in and of itself um, has pushed me to kind of open up to group guidance as mm. well, you know what I mean? So that way they have more support coming through the, you know, going, going, like through, the, yeah, going through the 12 weeks. Um, and then, you know, along with those, you know, private cannabis health coaching, um, but also consulting, like you said, food pairings, you okay. know, anybody having a private event and they want to be able to incorporate cannabis, um, dosing, you know, uh, ah. you know, guidance as well. And especially for people who are into infusing, so maybe uh, chefs that kind of want to understand what okay. infusing is, you know, and how, how to do that um, and incorporate, you know, that in their recipes, you know, with, mm-hmm. with, what's the best modality, the best ingredient to use. For okay. Specific things. So that is kind of where my consulting is right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I love the idea of, like you said, you have your private, you know, your patients or consumers, but then you also have businesses, Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I could see that, you know, I could see that for a lot of us that are, you know, have these specialties in, in the industry, you know, you just never know. I I actually, you know, was contacted to be an expert witness in a, in a federal, uh, (laughs) right. Oh, wow. And so that was, you know, (laughs) right. That was, that was interesting to testify and actually qualify as a cannabis mm. specialist and, and, and have my testimony lend, you know, whatever support yeah. in a federal case. So we just don't know what, you right. know, what pathway will open up, you know, as yeah. we continue to do the research and dive into what this plant can do and what it cannot, you know? Mm-hmm. And then for me, the, the goal is really to help as many of us, find, you know, balance in our lives with right. cannabis, with herbs, mm-hmm. um, you know, with the things that we have access to, especially uh, for me coming from New York City projects. And, you know, no, we, I, we, didn't, we didn't have access to, you know, farms and stuff mm-hmm. like that, where people, you know, grew their own food. Or we could, right. You know, and my mother used to talk about, you know, a time where she could pick fruit off of a tree. By the time I came along, you know, <laughs> that wouldn't happen. Was a rat. So, right, right. so now it's in, in urban areas, you know, in heavily yeah. dense urban areas. I want us to know that we do have ways to be able to thrive mm-hmm. in these spaces and, and, mm-hmm. help and heal. Um, so I really, truly appreciate your time. Everything um, that you all her contacts will be in the description you know i definitely want to put your website um your 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 Thank ig you. if you want people to follow you on ig <laughs> okay. and um i appreciate again i appreciate your time you know you're a professor i know you're pretty busy you're a consultant for all the businesses <laughs> you know and, and you develop products and you're a mom and a wife so, yes you know, yes I, yes I know all the things, things. I know the thing. So again, and if you or anyone you know is dealing with a condition um, and you feel like you need some some help, you know, please reach out to Dr. <laughs> Jamila Owens Todd and um and see where it is that she can help you uh, and give you guidance into your healing journey. Okay. Thank you again. Um, peace and love. Thank Until you. I appreciate it. I truly appreciate you.